just making sure that uh, we celebrate and check into place our culture, even as we are also looking forward to have a national dress. This is all in a quest to have an identity as a country. Hello, good morning. I'm Dibal Anair, and I want to thank you profusely for joining us this morning here, where we interrogate issues of foreign policy, diplomacy, and security. Today being Wednesday, doggedly following what is happening around us and around the world as well. Israel and Gaza is at the center of discussions right now with the numbers sticking up as far as casualties and deaths are concerned. Uh, that is going up to the 2,000 max as, or 2,000 mark as far as deaths is concerned. Just counting, of course, uh, from both sides of the divide with this warring faction where we had also the prime minister there uh, declaring war officially and we shall be interrogating this with our panelists this morning as well also the quest for unity in the country and in mounted kenya as well is posing to be another topic of discussion that we shall be interrogating this morning and i'll be joined this morning by professor peter kagwajo who is the ceo of <coughs> africa policy institute also Professor Naomi Daba, who is a senior partner at GLOSEP, also an expert on foreign policy and defense, will be joined as well by Yusuf Hassan, who is a member of parliament for Kamukunji, as well as a committee member on defense and foreign relations in the National Assembly, and will be joined as well this morning by Irung Hilton, who is executive director of Amnesty International, trying to see also what is happening on the humanitarian side where we have a blockade that has been enforced at Gaza and this is uh, after the order from the Minister of Defense that is Yohav, uh, uh, Minister of Defense in Israel that there should be no food, there should be no electricity and even medical aid uh, in Gaza because he turns that particular uh, move by Hamas as a animal or human animal right we shall be looking at that also much much later in the course of the program but for now let's see how the weather will be Nomi Daba is in the house already up and Ali he shall be telling us how he celebrated his Utamaduni day and we'll hear more from our panelists as well but let's see how the weather will be today That's how the weather will be today. I shall be showing you the dailies much, much later in the course of the program as we continue our pace and also the quarter of the day where Bruce Lee says, do not pray for an uneasy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. And of course, in these difficult times, we are just praying for strength to endure 
uh, the difficult times that we are living in. All right, let's see how it was yesterday. Hundreds of Kenyans flocked to the Bombers of Kenya to celebrate Utamaduni Day as a speaker called for unity, cohesion and integration brought about by the shared Kenyan identity. The event which was led by First Lady Rachel Ruto saw different communities present their cultural practices including street fairs, food festivals, cultural performances and cultural exhibitions. Emanolto start us off. From the signature Maasai dance to the throbbing Western Kenya Isikuti dances and the Mwomboko from the central region. Very well done, Kenya. The Bombers of Kenya was Wednesday buzz with activities as Kenyans from different ethnic communities thronged the venue to connect and have a taste of their cultural backgrounds. The First Lady Rachel Ruto, who presided over the event, called on Kenyans to be united and embrace their shared identities. This day also encourages us to explore, appreciate and understand each other's cultures, enabling us to foster a sense of unity and shared identity. On a global scale, culture has become an integral part of any nation's foreign policy, serving as a means to promote tourism and attract investments. War is bad and war should be condemned. But even more vehemently is that people who choose to do the wrong things and go to war should respect our cultural buildings, our cultural institutions, our religious institutions. Let us embrace the opportunity to bridge gaps, build bridges and foster a sense of pride in our shared identity. The leader has also called on Kenyans to fight the retrogressive culture of corruption and remain committed to a better country. Corruption is a vice. Corruption has permeated across all the sectors. Let us join hands and fight together. Let us retreat to our culture, our tradition, and bring up men and women that tomorrow and in future will be people who are just straightforward seeklers of the truth the event also saw kenyans showcase their rich traditional attire food and culture may the beauty of our diversity bring us together as kenyans and instill in us a powerful sense of patriotism najivunia kuwa kenya tujivunie kuwa wa kenya we promise by the next utamaduni day we will consult and we vow to at least have a Kenyan national dress by the next Utamaduni Day. The public holiday formerly known as Moi Day was initially renamed Huduma Day and later Utamaduni Day in 2020. Emmanuel Toh, KT News, Nairobi. All right, uh, the... We know that uh, the Lac Region Economic Block, which includes 14 counties, will today hold celebrations for the International Day of a Girl Child in Kericho. The event will be hosted at Kenya Evangelical University grounds with a focus on the plight of the girls in the region on matters relating to gender-based violence, HIV, and teenage pregnancies. Ken Ashuhi reports. Leaders from the Lake Region Economic Block are concerned by the worrying statistics on teenage pregnancies, HIV infections among girls and gender-based violence in the region. Fourteen counties which form this economic block have in the recent past made various interventions at policy level but challenges facing girls in the region continue to manifest themselves through the high illiteracy levels, financial exclusion, female genital mutilation and early marriages. We need that addressed so that there's protection for the benefit for the girl child around this uh, block and especially here in Kericho. It couldn't have been a better place to have this uh, event given that uh, the chair of 
agenda is from Kericho, we want to begin addressing pertinent issues surrounding the welfare of the girl child right here in Kericho. Data from the economic block indicates that 78% of the population lives in poverty, with 10 out of the 14 counties recording a worrying statistic on teenage pregnancies, which are above the national figure of 15%. Counties with the highest teenage pregnancy rates include Homabe, Migori, Siaya, Bungoma, Transoia, and Busia. Data from a study conducted by the Ministry of Health in August 2022 indicates that counties with high teenage pregnancy prevalence also record the highest rates of HIV infections. According to the ministry, Homabe, Migori, Siaya and Kisumu counties account for the country's 52% HIV burden with at least 98 adolescents getting infected with HIV every week. It is against this backdrop that the Lake Region Economic Bloc is set to hold joint celebrations of the International Day of the Girl Child at the Kenya Highland Evangelical University in Kericho County on Wednesday, October 11. Her Excellency, the First Lady, is going to grace this occasion. And for us, this is a wonderful opportunity that we have so we can now be sure that our agenda in the Bloc, and of course it will enhance this uh, arrangement within the country will now be discussed at the highest level possible. Among the issues to be discussed and summed up as a triple threat on girls' rights in the region include adolescent health promotion, investing in girls' rights, affirmative action, role of youth in shaping current and future leadership, and gender policy and regulations. The International Day of the Girl Child is celebrated every year on the 11th of October following a declaration by the United Nations General Assembly on December 19, 2011. Ken now, Kenya Unity, we are focusing on Mount Kenya Unity where Deputy President Gathe Keshagwa has continued to receive massive support in his quest to unite the Mount Kenya region and reconcile with retired President Uhuru Kenyatta. Political leaders from the region now say reconciliation between the two will mean that the region will speak in one voice and present their demands as a community. The DP has announced his intention to bring on board all politicians from the region who supported the Azimio La Umoja leaders, Raila uh, Azimio La Umoja leader, Raila Odinga. And Clement Masobo reports on this. Political leaders from central Kenya have continued to push for the support of Deputy President Regedi Gashagwa in his mission to push for unity of the region. The DP has been on a mission to unite political leaders and supporters of the Azimio Moja coalition from the region to jump ship and join the Kenya Kwanza side and speak in one voice. Sasa mimi nimekatishwa chini na waze. Nimekatishwa chini na watu ya kanisa. Nimekatishwa chini na wale watu wamechaguliwa. The second in command has already kicked off the reconciliation initiative and hinted that he will soon be reaching out to former President Uhuru Kenyatta to iron out the differences between the two for the good of the region. Na mimi nimesamuli, nimekubali and I have started that journey of uniting the Mount Kenya region behind President William Ruto. The DP's clarion call for unity and reconciliation has already received overwhelming support from political leaders who say that any reconciliation process will turn out to benefit the residents. We know that the importance of uniting ourselves so that we can get a common voice, a common bargaining power, a voice uh, to uh, establish ourselves you know, in the national government, in the allocation of resources, we know that is something that we must do. I felt it's important for me to put my, vo my voice out there and to challenge those leaders who are in office. Uh, the Deputy President has said this many times. Buffaloes do not stay together in a herd because they love each other. They stay together in a herd because it's safer that way. Sababu hile kazi uhuru ya mefanya tumeyona sisi wote. Wegine tukoma tu zao yake. Wakati tulishaguliwa 2013 na ya kashaguliwa tumefanya kazi na yeye. According to Gashagu and other political leaders, the reconciliation and unity of the region will ensure that the demands of Mount Kenya region are presented in one voice as demands of the community. The leaders add that they recognize the significance and the contribution of retired President Uhuru Kenyatta during his term as the country's fourth president. Nimesema watu wetu wale walipotea hata ile maoka maore 
nitamtafuta ile mtu mfupi nimtafute hata huyu pita mmoja si mtoto wetu si mtoto wetu is no problem those who are willing to unite i appreciate the fact that deputy president gadi gashagwa actually has heard the cries of some of us that once they took over leadership it became his responsibility as well to take care of the former president uhuru kenyatta and i'm glad to see that the animosity that was there has gone away and we, we are telling uhuru kenyatta we know you've been our leader and as such he is a respected elder as is the custom and the tradition of the kikuyu that every elder is is respected and so is uhuru kenyatta the conversation about uniting Mount Kenya region has come at a time when President William Ruto is pushing to win the hearts of voters from Nyanza region who have for decades supported the Azimio Lomoja leader Raila Odinga. Clement Masombo, KTN News. Now the government says the continuous influx of displaced populations to Kenya calls for comprehensive and adaptable solutions to address issues of displacement and identity. Prime Cabinet Secretary Musala Mudawadi says the solutions must consider both refugees and host communities. Hence, the government's transitioning from camps to integrated settlements under the Shirika plan. According to Mudawadi, Kenya has assisted over 80,000 refugees and asylum seekers in their voluntary repatriation efforts, supporting them in returning to their countries of origin to rebuild their lives and nations. Speaking at the 74th session of the Executive Committee of High Commissioners in Geneva, Switzerland, Mudavadi said by end of August, Kenya hosted over 600,000 refugees and asylum seekers. Kenya has assisted over 80,000 refugees and asylum seekers in their voluntary repatriation efforts, supporting them in returning to their countries of origin to rebuild their lives and nations. By end of August 2023, Kenya hosted a total of 644,000 refugees and asylum seekers. Among them, 83% are refugees, 17% are asylum seekers. The increase from July 2023 figures is primarily due to displacements caused by drought. Second, the Dab complex, a place of paramount importance in our refugee management efforts, currently houses 364,000 people spread across 75,000 households. Among these, 274,000 are officially registered and verified, while 94,000 individuals profiled and awaiting registration under the jurisdiction of the Department of Refugee Services. All right, let's just take a quick look at the dailies right now that we have it. Facing Uhuru is what is on the front page of Mount Kenya. That is uh, the splash this morning, Damascus moment. A probing question is being asked there after spending five years bashing. His predecessor, the president and his deputy, appear to have a change of mind and are heaping praises on a man they have loved to hate. What is afoot and why the change? That is a probing question there. You have to follow the story on page 6 of The Standard this morning. Let's just hear some of the bites here. Well, we have the president saying, quote-unquote, I must congratulate my predecessor, President Turu Kenyatta, for his foresight in coming up with this, that is Kisumo Shipyard refurbishment. And... Uh, to see what we are seeing here is phenomenal. Also, we have regarding Gashagwa, uh, Deputy President, saying the elections are over. It is time to gather and unite our people. We have agreed that no longer will pelt former President Uru Kenyatta with stones because he is still our son. So what, why the change of mind? That is everyone's questions right now. Uh, one single question that everyone is asking. And yesterday, Utamaduni Day, it's a dash of color, splendor, that's how it was yesterday in the quest now to get a national dress uh, to just make sure that we have our identity as well. First Lady Rachel Ruto can be seen here in green with other leaders and traditional dancers during the commemoration of Utamaduni Day at Bomas of Kenya, Nairobi yesterday. You can follow the story on page 3 of The Standard this morning. Azimio leader backs Ruto's move on, on ports. That is a, another one. 
Raila Odinga says concession of key port services to improve efficiency is global best practice, but county leaders must, must be involved. And that is the story that you want to follow on page 5 of the standard this morning. We have communities, also leaders, who are decrying this particular move. Uh, also, they want participation. NSSF's 2 billion shillings may have paper lands goes up in smoke. That is a story that we want to follow on page 2 of the standard this morning. And Kenya's race to clear Afghan steady a huddle is another story that you can follow on page 32 of the standard today. Remember, we have the Enterprise magazine. And you can get all the wiser as far as the Enterprise magazine is concerned. Farms now out. It says farms now cut credit lines. That is a story that you can follow inside the standard this morning. Moy's last days. That is a daily nation splash today. And the, this is all about a book serialization. When former President Daniel Arab Moy started experiencing difficulty in walking in, in 2017, it sparked concern from his personal doctor David Silverstein and his family. And thus began the deterioration of Moses' health that saw him flown to Israel for his final medical camp religious trip, then followed the ups and downs in his treatment journey until he breathed his last in February 2020. Read about this and more in the final installment of Heartbeat, an American cardiologist in Kenya. You can read all about it on page 12 and 13 of the Daily Nation this morning. We have David's Dr. David Silverstein saying, quote unquote, when I look back at his final eight months of his life, of life, from my own cultural perspective, I wish his final journey could have been shorter and more comfortable. It helped me to see him in distress, but there was some positive aspects. His presidential duties had left little time to be with his family. That family relationship were not stellar, uh, was not secret or was no secret during Zez's prolonged deterioration the family seemed to pull together and that is a story that you can read in the daily nation this morning it's make or break for Ryla Ruto dialogue that is what we have on the start this morning the team has received 258 written memoranda and 60 oral submissions the committee has 18 days to conclude talks and submit report to the two principals you have a story on page four and five of the star this morning, Pomp Color and Pageantry, Marku Tamaduni Day. You have the story written by you, you, you have all the details. And there is an exclusive interview here. CS Ababu defends record amid, amid the onslaught from UDA detractors. That is a story that you want to follow inside the star this morning. Hata Omena Imepanda. I tell you, that is what we have on the front page of Taifa Leo. Bada, bada garama ya maisha kupana marudufu be ya kitoweo. Kinacho na maskini omena ya panda pia. Garama ya maisha imendelea kwa lemea wa Kenya. Wenye mapato ya chini huku wengi sasa wakishidu hata kununua omena. Samaki hao wa dogo ambao kwa muda mbrefu wamekua wakichukuliwa kuwa chakula cha maskini. Sasa wamepanda be karibu mara mbili. You can follow the story on page 2 of Taifa Leo this morning and this is how it looks also wapinzani wa Kawira watengana Bukaya ajiondoa kikusini you can read all about that inside Taifa Leo this morning and Rai Helaza El Nino Zitolewe Mapema and Mili Elfu Moja Miyatano Ya Hamas excuse me Ya Patikana you can follow the story on page 8 of Taifa Leo as we buckle down to business, this is what is on the front page. NCSA rejects Bowles license renewal on driver protest. Firm has 17 days to address complaints or seize operations. Bolt Bowles says taxi operator is fully compliant. You have the story continuing and we're laid out for you on page two of the business daily this morning. Kenya open or open stocks with IMF World Bank on Eurobond repayment. That is a story that you can follow on page two of the business daily microfinance backs loan book thins to eight-year law and why more kenyan ceos are planning job cuts before new year more than a quarter of chief executives expect to cut jobs before the end of the year on increased on increased operating costs 
and softened demand for goods and services, setting up families for a gloomy festivities period. NCBA raises interest rates for second time. NCBA Group plans to increase its cost of loans for the second time in four months amid growing struggles of the ability to, of borrowers to service their credit facilities. You have the story on page 14 of the Business Daily this morning. And Kenya Open Talks with IMF World Bank on Euro Bond Repayment. I've already said that for you. Uh, it bears repeating. You can follow the story on page two of the Business Daily. In Tanzania, DAG or DAS growth pushes up or upper capita, pushes up per capita income. That is a splash. The average per capita income in Tanzania has increased by 5% of the past year, driven largely by swift economic growth in Dar es Salaam and the lack and northern zones according to new bank of tanzania statistics you have a story inside the citizen this morning uh, continues on page two and revealed how mental disorders are ravaging youth in tanzania it's also a whole of africa affair you that is really distressing and depressing you can follow the story inside the citizen eac budget finally sells through uh, that story continues on page two of the citizen in Tanzania. Uh, Mapachu opens up on his life in autobiography and all that is tucked away inside the citizen. Killer prostate cancer crisis is a splash on the front page of the Daily Monitor if you're waking up in Uganda and it says uh, researchers from the Uganda Cancer Institute and South Korea's National Cancer Center say uh, in the next few years men suffering from prostate cancer will hit nearly nearly 100,000 up from 42 percent that is uh, what you can read there not very clear for my end so let me just leave it at that but you have a splash for you if you're waking up in Uganda right also Newsweek future is Singapore how these five places that is Charlotte uh, Freiburg Paris and Seattle how these five places are leading the way to a greener world. This is the latest from uh, the Newsweek. And also, I just wanted to give you that particular a pip up or a pick me up that is from Bruce Lee. Do not pray for an easy life, pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. If you may remember Bruce Lee, that, he, what, that is what he said. And the shareholder, uh, this is the what Victor has drawn for us. Hey, shareholders. Uh, that has been the debate, especially right now that he has been in uh, Nyanza. And you can see he's trying to scrub off that particular uh, label there that it has been hanging over the deputy president or the shareholders. So this is what Victor had drawn for us earlier. And today is, of course, you have also still got on it. I want Kenya Kwanza government listed at the Nairobi Security Exchange. That is what Rigi G is saying, of course, with the shareholders. Uh, I'll leave it for you to decide for this. We shall be discussing just Mount Kenya unity and the shareholders, uh, of course, just looking at the local polit politics before we get to see what is happening internationally. This is what Gato has drawn today. And today's Daily Nation has this as well. Deputy Minority Whip, the circus that is ongoing within Jubilee Party. Uh, the law is very clear. So who is it? Is it Jeremiah Kioni? Is it Sabina Shege? And we can see also the Jubilee party leaders or all the former Jubilee party leaders looking on as well. That is what has been captured today. Deputy Minority Whip of the Jubilee Circus continues. And in the star is all about Gaza and Israel. Tit for tat. Right? And is a gentle dove there that is hurting right now. And everyone is praying for the peace of Israel and Palestine right now where we have people and the civil or the casualties largely women and children being affected by this right now we have the number which has risen so far to over 2,000 we shall be giving you details of this as we discuss with the panelists what does it portend especially even internationally when it comes to the oil prices where we've seen the dollar has really gained in light of this particular war and also the yen as well uh, the stocks have skidded as well uh, that is the u.s stocks and uh, that is uh, indicative of what is happening currently 
uh, globally, how does it affect us as well moving forward? All right. And also just looking at the international publications, which has been headlining this. This is the letters that we have, of course, uh, given the time zone. Israel declares siege of Gaza as Hamas threatens captives, is what the Guardian was holding. And uh, we can see also tells there, they're in my house, terror in, in the kibbutz, uh, where people who are calling for help. UN chief condemns the escalating violence amid soaring death toll. That is what the Guardian was uh, holding. Uh, the Washington Post, where well, I cannot be able to expand it, it says Israel orders full siege of Gaza Strip. Uh, you can see the details as well there. I don't know why it's refusing to expand, but that's the Washington Post for you. Uh, the Wall Street Journal. Israel readies ground assault in Gaza is what is on the front page there. And we can see artillery shells were lined up on Monday in Israel near the border with Gaza as Israel's military unleashed a barrage of attack. Israel caught by surprise prepared for the wrong war. We have also crisis deepens with execution threats. Uh, for every one rocket that falls in Gaza, that is one life taken away by Hamas. That is what they have said. And this one continues to face. What does it really portend? That is what the whole the Wall Street Journal had also uh, captured earlier. We shall be looking at this with our panelists this morning. Allow me to just to introduce them. I'd introduce them earlier, but for now, let's see their faces. I'm holding court this morning with Yusuf Hassan, who is a member of parliament for Kamukunji and also a member of Defense and Foreign Relations in the National Assembly. And also we have with us Professor Peter Kagwanja, who is the CEO of Africa Policy Institute, and Professor Naomi Damba, who is a partner, senior partner with Glossop, also an expert on foreign policy and defense, eagerly waiting to be joined by Irungi Hutton. He will be running late this morning. He will join us from uh, 7 o'clock this morning, who is Executive Director of Amnesty International. Well, uh, let's just hear the voices. I begin with Naomi Damba. Noah, good morning. Good morning, Dupal. How, uh, how are you? And, uh, and thanks for having us. You're welcome. On this beautiful morning. It is indeed beautiful. Yeah, du Dubal uh, ran into uh, a group of cows uh, early in the morning on the street. Uh, on the way here? On the way here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I saw these cows actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, we need well, order. Make, we need order. Yeah, we, we need order <laughs> separating animals <laughs> and people and people. <laughs> Isn't it? <good? laughs> yeah. We have to change things. We have to change things. Yeah. Actually, indeed, uh, I was feeling a bit and I had to break on the emergencies because also the matatu in front of me had to give way for the cows that appeared yes. from nowhere. So, uh, coexistence uh, with our animals as well. But uh, even as we're talking about that, uh, I think later, since you're raising a uh, concern about uh, livestock and uh, Yusuf Hassan as well, you tell me because uh, this is normally for, for the nomadic community. There is a new bill that is a castle rustling compensation fund bill that is being sponsored by the Member of Parliament uh, from uh, Turkana, uh, that is James, that uh, he seeks for any cattle rustling that happens in the country, there should be a compensation uh, to, from the taxpayers. Now we should be paying out for this cattle rustling and that will be, the taxpayers will be forking out almost two billion shillings for that. So I said that maybe I need to float this idea uh, for us to discuss. So why would it, should it be our concern as citizens where maybe the security personnel has failed to enforce, uh, you know, security in these areas? But I don't know. Uh, that is just a, by the way, uh, by and by, we will talk about it much, much later in the course of the program. But let's hear from uh, Peter Kagwanja. Mm. Good to see you. Last week we mm. missed you. Yes, I was in Russia to prepare something uh, in, in uh, regard to the coming Belt and Road Initiative Conference on October 17. Uh, I'm told. Uh, Where is this conference happening? It is happening in Beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the, the people, or this is the, the framework within which uh, Vika Road, uh, this is the, the expressway, the mm -hmm. railway from Nairobi to Mombasa to Naivasha and now headed to Maraba. Mm -hmm. That's the framework within which the uh, this, uh, the, 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 these fundings took place mm -hmm. and uh, you know we talk about the robot center we talk about a huge number of industries that are coming up uh, in the country so it's, it's very very important I happen to, to, to have gone and retreat to just see 
what, what exactly is happening within that uh, sector mm -hmm. in terms of funding. But uh, I, I sympathize with the owners of the cow. I'm not with Midaba myself. <laughs> I'm the owners of the cows. <laughs> and, and, uh, slow down. Let the cows pass. Let the cows graze. This, Give way to the, uh, to the this, cows. This is our country. Remember, yeah. we all come from different areas. And, and I know my, my people, my ancestors and my uh, kith and kin uh, who are uh, uh, tillers of land and growers of crops have difficulties uh, you know dealing with this but we all come from different backgrounds they, mm -hmm. we came from uh, our creator from different parts the Maasai's and the others came with holding the cows the, the Somalis holding their camel you know the land is not important for them for the rest of us it's about the boundaries mm -hmm. uh, this mountain that mountain divide our land mm -hmm. uh, so for the Maasai this is the, the place of cold water, that's what Nairobi means. Mm -hmm. uh, Nairobi means, you know, the, the place of cool waters. Cool waters, where cows yes. are at home. When every other place is hostile to them, Jomo Kenyatta Airport has grass. Essentially, this was a, you know, yeah, yeah. A, a cow's a pasturing area. It, it, so we, uh, the people who displaced the cows. We, in fact, the, the cow came before us. The cow came before us. And the cow knew this place. <laughs> you know, I, at one time, I remember it was 1983 or thereabout, I was in high school. <laughs> then uh, I found Masai's coming in, um, in taxis. And I said, well, what are they doing here? And I was told this was their land. Mm. I'm talking about the heart of Moranga, mm -hmm. uh, around a place called Bombo. This is a, so Moranga actually was up to Maragua River, those days. So when they came and started grazing, they, they put a manyata up somewhere. Even now, the Moranga County uh, government has not possessed that land. It's still public land. So they come and put their cows there. And, and incidentally, they coexisted very well with the people. Went on, well, um, of course, four of my cows <coughs> died. Of our cows died mm -hmm. that time because of, uh, uh, you know, the mixing of the, these uh, <laughs> the cows and, and, and these uh, Frisians uh, wasn't very good. <laughs> the Frisians suffered. But, but they, 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 they were accommodated and they stayed there with the people and grazed their cows right. and immediately drought was out, they went back to where they went. Right. So I, I think we need to find a way of coexisting. I have no problem with this grazing on the roadside. The coexisting, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, coexisting so because we, should, we, are the, we should it, give is, way. it mm -hmm. is development that is de displacing people. It is development that is displacing people. And we, so need, to, we yes. need to find a bridge. Why did I talk about the Belt and Road Initiative? Because there was a huge debate about how do we build development on Savo National Park, All right. on Nairobi National Park, without displacing the animals. That happened. We built a road bridge. Mm -hmm. The longest road bridge on the continent, I think, is over Nairobi National Park. The other one is over Savo National Park. Mm -hmm. The giraffe, you remember the... The, the, how they, the, the oldest, the, the tallest giraffe in, human, in history, the mm -hmm. giraffe history, mm -hmm. is George. He's a Maasai bull. Huh? So they have 5.8 meters. They had to do some, uh, some calculation so that Thank the you. bridge has to be above right. George. Yes. Yeah, let's say from uh, Yusuf Hassan <laughs> as well. Uh, I think you, if you experience that, that will be a, a moment of worship. If it's a, it was in another jurisdiction where the cow is sacred and the cow is... Uh, yeah. Hallowed or hallowed, uh, so to speak. Well, uh, the cow is <coughs> sacred even to the Maasai, maybe not uh, to the extent of uh, uh, the sub Indian continent, uh, because it provides uh, for, for the community. It provides meat, it provides milk, uh, sustenance. And you know, we're going through a very difficult economic situation. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a shortage of um, pasture and water in some of the areas, they have been squeezed into small areas unproductive areas and so I think it is just natural and normal to see cows within our midst mm. because only some few years ago uh, we had um, Mbakasi was a grazing ground uh, for the community and that land has shrunk uh, we are expanding further uh, to a certain extent you're telling people you can keep Nairobi National Park thousands of kilometers mm. um, sort of um, for the rich to go and enjoy themselves and the tourists to go and have fun. Uh, but your cattle can die on the edge of this particular uh, uh, national park. So mm -hmm. we need to accommodate, uh, we need to create a, an environment in which uh, we can all uh, live together 
for the Maasai now because of the uh, drastic uh, climate change that they're facing. Um, they're facing a matter of survival and many of the nomads are uh, up uh, north uh, similarly on the edge of um, extinction as far as uh, pastoralism is concerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. All right, we just want to also focus a bit, now that you're here, uh, just looking at the dailies as well, I wanted just to scroll over to see what is happening uh, with uh, your party. And we can see this editorial cartoon. Maybe you want to just comment on it. Uh, we have the deputy mi minority whip uh, as far as the affairs of the party is concerned. If my director may just pick up that so that we can continue. That is uh, today's Daily Nation is holding this particular uh, editorial cartoon. And it says, Deputy minor Minority Whip, the law is clear. The law is, uh, is very clear. Uh, the Mount Kenya unity facing Uhuru is a splash as well. Uh, we can see also a U-turn uh, from the Deputy President. You know, the bashing that was there before, uh, the pelting of very caustic words, so to speak, also as well. But you don't remember the Jubilee Party. Uh, what is the current state of play? Well, I mean, uh, uh, Jubilee is a... Uh is split. The majority of us who are sitting in Parliament uh, have moved on. We, uh, we have formed um, um, our own uh, leadership uh, based um, uh, on our needs. And then there's the other old uh, Jubilee, which uh, was holding the headquarters, the political, mm -hmm. the other political wing, which is cont contesting that. And this is a matter in courts. And every day, one day, one section of um, Jubilee wins the, the, the court decision or the, the tribunal's decision, and then the other side appeals. So this is what has been going on. Uh, but in reality, the majority of the Jubilee Party, uh, overwhelming majority of the um, Jubilee Party uh, who are in Parliament and in the Senate, uh, have selected um, uh, Sabina Chege and um, uh, Kanini Kega as, as their leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there is the Kioni, um, uh, faction, yes, uh, which is sitting in some office, uh, trying to be play a relevant role mm -hmm. uh, in the political. So this is going to be de determined in the political tribunal and in the courts. Uh, but because um, there's a lot of this party, maybe um, uh, has a lot of uh, money, uh, they're willing to go to court um, indefinitely. But somehow, somewhere uh, between now and early next year there will be a, a decisive uh, judicial uh, decision mm -hmm. uh, which will determine the leadership. But it is obvious that at the moment the Registrar of Political Parties recognizes uh, Sabina Chege as, um, as the chair and uh, uh, Kanini Kega as the Secretary General of this particular section of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. uh, what is happening is that the other uh, rump of Jubilee is contesting this in, 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 in courts. Uh, but the tribunal has already determined that. It has determined that uh, the decisions made by, uh, by the Kioni wing uh, has no basis, is not legal. And we're just waiting to, uh, for that to be formalized uh, at the end of these uh, uh, court decisions that have been uh, registered in Kiambu, in Mombasa, in, in different places, just to make it difficult mm -hmm. for the party to move forward. But it's important for Jubilee to move forward so that it can play an active role in the politics of the country because mm -hmm. these court decisions uh, seem to have um, slowed down uh, our ability to be able to um, move forward and speak for our constituents. Right. And in light of that, of course, I wanted you've rented my thoughts towards that. I was to ask you, well, reading from your tea leaves, uh, what do you see as the future of Jubilee? Uh, now that it's been really, or they've slowed their role, so to speak, right now, uh, well, I mean, the uh, uh, Jubilee has a, has a constituency. It has elected 32 uh, members of parliament and senators and hundreds of uh, MCAs. So it, it, it is an important constituency. It's the second uh, 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 largest party in the Azimio Alliance. Um, it is bigger if they, than... If they are still in Azimio, It is bigger. Yeah, t technically, legally, we are in Azimio until such a time, in fact, uh, we would be exiting. And I think the majority view of um, the 32 or so members, mm -hmm. apart from one or two maybe, is that we move forward and uh, start become a standalone independent party rather than be uh, mashed up uh, in the, in the current, current political uh, push and pull. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, Jubilee would exist in some...
form or another. Uh, it would um, engage in another engagement um, uh, and another realignment come the next election. This is a typically Kenyan political right. scenario. Mm -hmm. It's not different from what has happened in the past. Uh, and because the problem also is because our political pa parties are not um, deep rooted. They are really not political parties that are run by members. Uh, this is the first time, in fact, there's an attempt uh, by uh, a group of members of parliament uh, to take over the running of a political party. Uh, but in, in previous occasions, parties are run by party leaders. They are more or less pol uh, the personal properties mm -hmm. uh, of those leaders. And the rank and file and members of parliament and uh, uh, MCAs do not have much say in what happens in those political parties. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we need also change in our political culture, in, uh, in our political party mentality, so mm -hmm. that we have uh, deep-rooted uh, membership parties that have grassroots support. I think um, the nearest to that is uh, ODM at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, UDA is trying to uh, develop uh, a broad-based uh, uh, membership uh, system. Mm -hmm. But there isn't really uh, a continuity, a party that has existed for a very long time with a very strong power base uh, within, the, uh, within the population. Okay, uh, given this, uh, you know, factions within uh, Jubilee Party, and I know also Professor Peter Kagwanja, you had uh, given a stab at politics as well, running under still Jubilee, mm -hmm. and uh, you felt uh, somehow uh, frustrated because of uh, the s state of affairs within also the nominations that were done in Moranga as well. Mm -hmm. But given this now chasm that is still developing, do you see a breakup of uh, Jubilee Party? Because if you have this faction within Jubilee Party who feel they, are, they have sort of the lonely right to be on that particular seat as, uh, as the leaders of a Jubilee Party and we have another faction of the Sabina Shege a faction, even moving forward, when we have a determination, a decisive decision that has been made by the court still, uh, there will be that wage that has developed, that is bound to be, you know, growing uh, bigger, bigger as a rift. Mm. <coughs> I, I think the, we must start from uh, the principles. Uh, first of all, we have to establish, are you still a member of Jubilee Party as oh, it is right now? Um, myself, no. no, no. I'm, I'm not a member of yeah. Jubilee Party officially. Officially. I, I, I got frustrated because I spent a huge number, amount of uh, money uh, trying to get nomination only to get a call or whatever message was sent to me that Professor, you, you would rather give you another job and therefore we want you to, 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 to stop in Muranga. And I, I got furious about it because that's, it took us to 1988, the Murorongo thing, where the, the, the leader of the country is the one who tells you what to do as if the, the, the electorate don't have a say. Mm -hmm. And at that juncture, you have moved up and down. You have, I, I was originally a DP member. And I moved to Jubilee in respect to the fact that uh, the leader of the country had basically favored my, my, my family, they nominated, I mean, given us positions. And therefore, it, it publicly, you can't distance yourself from the president of the time. So it was, it, it, it was a very difficult moment for me that you have to show respect and royalty to the leadership of the time. At the same time, you have to declare your leadership, I mean, your, your, your right to leadership and to political uh, involvement without uh, patronage. So I, I decided that I have to, to, to have my dream deferred. Mm -hmm. And I deferred my dream to, to the future. Uh, so I, as that is concerned, I needed to distance myself from the party. So I went to the head, I told my lawyer to go to the party and basically withdrew that membership until I, I decided. Because I, the, I thought Jubilee is not democratic mm -hmm. to that extent. I, I, I say this uh, with due respect to my, to my uh, brother uh, to my left. Uh, it is not democratic mm -hmm. at all. There is no pretense about democracy. So this split you see here uh, is, is just about the quest for democracy in Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Uh, and therefore, I did not think that I needed to be there. Mm -hmm. So th I, I hope that settles the, the waters. All right. Now, now the, move on. This, the second is uh, whether parties can, can exist without their patrons or their leaders. I, I again sympathize with uh, my, my student, uh, who is also my, my mentor. I, in, it's a, the Kenya is very confusing. 
because <laughs> I took him from his leadership in human rights movement. <laughs> that's where I started, and then I found him in my class. <laughs> so, so that's how. So we were very interesting, and then at one time I, I was a strategist in his team in Kamukunj. So we come a long way. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but and I can see the, the quest for sustainable parties, the quest for parties that do not depend on the on the leadership of one person. But the trend as it ha as we have it today is that. Uh, a party without a political leader is dead. Mm -hmm. uh, Kibaki had Democratic Party died. Well, immediately uh, he vacated. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, we 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 spend lots of time building the Party of National Unity, and the the fight between ODM and the Party of National Unity uh, is now part of our history. Where is the, uh, the the Party of National Unity? It's dead. Why? Because Kibaki is not there. Uh, when NAC, National Rainbow Coalition, was built, uh, it was the party that basically delivered Kenya uh, to the multi-party era, genuinely, the multi-party era. Why is NAC? Because the leader vacated. Now, what makes Jubri people think that Jubri is going to survive uh, without Uhuru Kenyatta? And uh, what chances do, does Uhuru Kenyatta have to lead the party from the front? So uh, the leadership of the party has always been offered. As soon as Raila Odinga is not a leader of mm -hmm. all age democratic movement, it doesn't matter what happens, the, 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 I mean the, that movement will be gone. Mm -hmm. Because why, where is NDP? NDP is the one that entered coalition with the Kano. Mm -hmm. Why is it now? So the, the nexus between the political party and its leadership mm -hmm. and the the leadership being at the national level and contesting for the top seat is what keeps parties in Kenya together. Mm -hmm. It is not the ideology, it is not how they are mobilized uh, from the grassroots and so on. Uh, it is because Kano has been the longest ruling party here, it is still alive and, and well, mm -hmm. but why is it not in this contest? Mm -hmm. Because its founder and the leader, Jomo Kenyatta and Daniel Moy, are not there. So again, we need to rethink this particular process. It's a, it's, it's a big, big question for the, for the nation to debate about the future of our political parties, beyond them being what you can call uh, special purpose vehicles, mm -hmm. because that's all they are. They are special purpose vehicles. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's much I can say right. about the party. All right, so, uh, I don't know what Monomi Demo has to say, but before we take a short break as well, we shall look at also the Mount uh, Kenya unity, just briefly before we gravitate to what is happening yeah, internationally. Yeah, Dubal, um, there is nothing wrong with what we call distributive, uh, distributive uh, democracy, uh, which we have right now. Um, we come from a unit, uh, unit distributive that, democracy. Distributive democracy. That means there are elements within democracy which make it vibrant, uh, but they sub, they sub different interests. Mm -hmm. And so we come from Kanu, which united us and had a very specific purpose and deliver independent. Uh, then after that, we evolved into multi-party where we are right now. And I think Orengo was, was, uh, uh, was right when he advised the president, don't go uh, with the idea of destroying multi-party democracy. Because at this point, really, the country is not not ready uh, for, for a united party uh, because uh, like uh, Kagwanja just said, party are really personal. Uh, they are almost property of individual. And once those individuals are gone, parties are gone. The, the future is still open uh, to develop uh, the kind of uh, uh, Tories, Labour Party in the future, Demo Democrat, uh, um, Republican. That may happen. Uh, but not in the foreseeable future. Uh, we are still really fragmented, and our politics has put us where we are right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Right, indeed. Uh, uh, well, time is ticking up to 7 o'clock on the nose. Uh, when we circle back, we shall be looking at uh, uh, what is on the front page as well of uh, the standard, just briefly, and the editorial cartoon in the standard as well, on uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government that is being listed at the Nairobi Security Exchange. 
right? Uh, that is about all the shareholders as well. And why the U-turn? Deputy President has been one of the feisty uh, criticizer of the former regime and the President Turu Kenyatta, but right now he's circling back. Is anything happening uh, up his collective slaves? What is really 